in the early hours of a June morning, the California capital would awake to a violent act born of fire. On this night, three Sacramento area synagogues were firebombed within a 45 minute period. It was the worst series of anti-Semitic attacks in Sacramento history. Fire inspectors at the scene quickly called in the FBI to conduct a hate crimes investigation. The hardest hit was B'nai Israel, the oldest congregation west of the Mississippi, which had just marked its 150th anniversary. Although the sanctuary was damaged, the Torahs were saved. But the library was engulfed in flames, and thousands of books collected here by generations of Jewish worshipers were suddenly turned to ashes. There were books in there which illustrated our history with nameplates in the books that had been donated to honor people's parents. And that's what hurts. What's interesting is that they hit the learning center. Uh, how, they, how anybody expects that's going to affect the temple or learning? Is, is beyond me, but all this does is give the Jewish people more courage. Rabbi Brad Bloom presides over this congregation of over 2,000. When I stood here in the wee hours of Friday morning, smelling the aftermath of this fire, and that is the hardest thing for me, is to say that I'm not accepted because I'm a Jew. And to my horror, I saw it. I saw the fire. <laughs> when Vice Mayor Jimmy Yi saw the burnt facade of B'nai Israel, it brought back horrible memories. Yi was on his way to City Hall that morning, when he came upon the first flames of the summer of hate. Being that it's in my district, I decided to pull over just to find out what was going on. That burned out library brought back flashback to the time my own home was firebound. A few years earlier, Asian, African American, and Jewish community groups had been the targets of hate-related arsons. Jimmy Yi was attacked at his home. An incendiary device was thrown through the front window of his house. Hate crime has been <clears throat> a problem here in Sacramento for a number of years. I mean, this was not the first incident of hate crime. Uh, in 1992, there were a series of arsons and firebombings. And at that time, we banded together in support of each other. Uh, the fact that the Jewish synagogue was attacked again just brought us back together again. Sacramento citizens and leaders had learned from past violence and decided to act quickly. Before the ashes had settled, Jimmy Yi and members of the Asian American community came together with a plan of support. We met all day long, worked all around the clock. We had heard what had happened in Billings and we thought that was a grand idea to uh, get the community to come together. And shortly after coordinating with the Jewish community, we came up with using the word Kai which means life. Just two days after the arsons, the Sacramento Bee printed a full-page symbol for people to hang in their windows. This was uh, grassroots organizers who came together and decided what to do. That here's an old-fashioned medium, a print newspaper, that can disseminate in one morning a message that now can not only be read, but can be placed in people's you know, storefronts and, and automobiles and homes in a way that really made you feel um, the power. Uh, of people acting and taking that sort of affirm affirmative step. The fact that Sacramento is willing to do these things, and that the city government is behind these things, gives us support. For Paul Sieve, his experience with this hate crime was also personal. He's a member of the B'nai Israel congregation. The support of the community is really what made uh, is what made the response so palpable and so reassuring and made you feel that you weren't being marginalized, that you were a part of the Sacramento community. 
just three days after the attacks. The curtain rose on a stage filled with rabbis, priests, imams, and other religious and public leaders welcoming the 4,000 residents attending a unity rally at the community center. It's very dramatic when you see that kind of crowd come up on such short notice. So it's very important to have the community step forward and say, hey, we're behind you. Uh, if they don't do those things, uh, you just don't have that same drive to continue to fight this hatred. What I'm hoping is, is that the momentum will not be lost and that we will not go back to the way we were.